Hey guys, Andre from Beefy Techie here, here with a updated guide for streaming on a Mac. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to do somewhat something unified that's going to basically cover all of the USB 2.0 devices, such as the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable, the Avermedia Ultra Extreme Cap U3, I believe is what it's called, the Hophawk HD PVR1, and I stress that. I can't stress that enough. It's the HD PVR1, as well as the Elgato Game Capture HD and the Game Capture HD60. Now, um, I don't have my Avermedia LGP here or my UltraCap here, but I can basically summarize it for you. But we're going to start off with the Elgato Game Capture HD, the Elgato Game Capture HD60, and the Hophog HD PVR1. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are, you know, looking for a way to actually start streaming and stuff like that. And a lot of people are telling you, hey, why don't you get an Elgato Game Capture? I hear a lot of YouTubers use it. YouTubers don't stream. YouTubers basically just record videos, gameplay videos, and upload them to YouTube. A lot of times, these devices are not great. They're not ideal for streaming because they are just meant to just record. They are what you call a PVR. They're PV personal video recorder. So they allow you to record stuff and whatnot. So they won't work directly with any program that's pretty much made right now on the market. Like Adobe FMLE won't work with it. Um, OBS wouldn't work with it. Coco Split won't work with it. And the reason why is because it's not meant to stream. It doesn't have direct show capability. These are USB 2.0 devices, which basically has to encode the video that it receives in order to get it through your USB port. Now, at first things might seem perfectly fine, but then after a while, it starts to get sluggish. Anyway, so what we're going to do is I'm going to basically give you guys who have an Elgato Game Capture HD, HD60, or the really old but super reliable Hophog HD PVR, I'm going to give you guys first you know what you guys gotta do okay now if you have the Elgato game capture HD and the Elgato HD 60 what you would need to do is you have to send an email to Elgato support um, pretty simple just tell them that you have a game capture HD or HD 60 and you would love to use ITV with it because it's a little bit more reliable for you um, you can basically, cause you, I, I feel like the HD, the ITV gives you a little bit more options, because of this one little feature that I'm going to show to you guys right now. Now, just so you guys know, I'm using my uh, um, Hophog HD PVR1 because I gave away my Game Capture HD a little while ago, but um, I'm going to show you something that's super cool with the ITV. Now, um. Let's say you're playing Call of Duty and things like that. Or let's do this. I'm going to move around. I'm going to find something that can basically cover something. Well, whatever. I I'll just show you guys here. Basically, ITV is a personal video recording software which works with personal video recording hardware such as the Elgato Game Capture HD, HD60, and the HD PVR from Hopog, and it basically allows you to use it as a PVR. So let's say if you hook up your television to one of these things, you actually have a DVR now, so you can actually record and go back in time. Something that's pretty cool because, you know, it basically gives you the option of instant replay. So if you wanted to go back to a moment where you play something while it won't capture your voice it will capture the game and the game audio in true in its truest form so you basically have this slider here and you can rewind fast forward or things like that so you can always rewind your stream have it delayed a certain amount because I always get people who play me in like Madden or something and they always want to see what plays I pick and sometimes I pick the same play over and over so they'll sit there and watch the stream and see that I pick this play and this that and the other so what I do is I just rewind it back and let them guess which play that I'm actually going to run. Either way, um, it's one really super cool feature to actually have. Another thing that I like about this software is that you can actually route the audio yourself 
to a completely separate output. So if you wanted to have it output to your, you know, your your, you know, built an output, it actually will. So I'm actually not hearing it in my headphones because I actually believe they had the audios all the way down. So if I were to do that, I can actually hear the audio. And while I'm only hearing it on one side, that's perfectly okay. But as I said before, ITV is basically the only way to go. So now, how are we going to actually get this out to everyone watching on Twitch, Hitbox, um, whatever streaming site that you use? A lot of us use Twitch, Hitbox. For those who stream on MLG like myself, this one goes out to you too. Um, if you stream on YouTube, hey, there's no way for you people to chat, but if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But um, how do you get this window to OBS? Now, the thing is, you're going to need this one piece of software called Siphon Inject. Um, Zach, who's the maker of Coco Split, created this program last year, August, and it's worked great for me because... Siphon to me is a lifesaver because it's able to actually capture something without having to screen cap. I've realized that when you screen cap a window, it actually uses a lot more resources than anything else. I'm also going to show you something else that OBS is able to do. OBS is actually able to um, capture screen regions. So what you would do is you do a display capture. You hit OK. And then what you would do is, you, because it's the only one, if you want to say crop to a window, and then you say which window, you want to do ITV, but let's do it window and manual. Here, here's where the problem comes in because the thing is, you are only working with so much space on the window that you can't sit here and crop it a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? So, you're you're kind of left with trying to figure out how to do this so you're sitting here you're like okay I'm gonna move this here like you, you see how tedious this is like you are gonna have to sit here and make sure that nothing and when I say nothing I mean nothing is blocking it so I have to do this so that this way I can make sure that I can crop the top enough Oh wait, wrong way. Crop the top. And that's it. But like I said, this this is a bit tedious. Like you're gonna have to sit here, you're gonna have to make sure that this window isn't blocked. So you're gonna have to either I wonder if you could do this. Can I do this? Can I just move it from here and post it there? And then Nope, you can't even do that. So this method right here, not that great of a method. So I'm going to go back to this, and we're going to um, get rid of that whole idea because the display capture with the cropping, not great. So we're going to get rid of that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to inject ITV. Inject. Now, OBS does not have Siphon capabilities, well, not yet at least. But um, I believe even though it will get it soon, I'm probably going to not use it because um, Cantus actually has a little bit more tools, which I'll show in another video later. Uh, on today, you'll see that video. But um, there'll be a video posted later about that. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically select a button that I've already set up for Siphon. But just for your viewing purposes, I will show you how to do that stuff. Now, mind you, this is the studio portion of Cantwist. So when you open up Cantwist, you basically can go to View and go to Studio. A lot of times when you open up Cantwist, it's going to open up exactly like this. You're not going to see anything. You'll just see Cantwist up here. In fact, I'm going to close OBS just so you can get a better idea. Um, so when you open up Cantwist, it's just going to do that. One thing that you can actually do is hit Command S, and it'll actually open Cantwist for you. So what I'm going to do is, since 12 has nothing in it, I'm going to hit Edit. I'm going to um, go into Edit, and then once you see the little plus sign, I'm going to hit that. That's going to bring up the Effects window. 
Um, you're going to look for Siphon, which is normally up at the very top because these are things that are normally full screen things. You just hit add. Once you're done adding it, you're going to... Huh, it's a bug that I got to tell Steve about. But um, you have to click like in the white spot and then you have to click Siphon. Go ahead and select ITV and just like that ITV shows. Now mind you this is just a preview window in order for you to get it over to the other side you have to either cut or dissolve it. I like to use dissolve because I like the little effect that it does when it dissolves in and out. Either way um, so now now that that's done you wanna basically um, have this sent to OBS but before we go into that I'm going to give you a little brief description brief tutorial of CamTwist. Now, something I love about CamTwist is the ability to actually play videos, have overlays and things like that. Now, it can do tons of things. Anything that you want to do on a stream, CamTwist can do. If you want a green screen, you can green screen in OBS. If you want to um play a video, you can play a video in OBS. So as you can see right here in number 11, I actually have a video and it'll play the video right there. I have the player bar. So if you want to go back to something, you could actually go back to it and it'll play the video. And it'll output the audio through your typical audio that you have, or you can go into the preferences and just have the audio play through one of your devices that you want to have go out that you have set up in OBS, whether it be Soundflower, WaveTap, or if you're using a mixer like myself, just have it go through your default audio. So anyway, um, we're going to go back to Untitled number 12, which is basically the siphon, the ITV that I siphoned in. And another thing that's cool about Siphon Inject is you can actually quit it and never have it open because it's already doing the task that it needs to be doing. So now that we have this video here, we can actually, another thing that's cool is you could do what I said before, you could take it throw it in there and you never have to see it on your screen again so you can just do that put that there you can go back to my main dat desktop and I'm all set so now I could go into here and open up OBS and then I could just go ahead add a video capture device hit OK go to devices and I can select cam twist now everything is pretty much all set at this point I could do my stream from that so I could basically just use Cantos to be my video device or I could just sit here and I could just start adding overlays so if I want to add an image I could go ahead and add an image I could say OK browse See, one thing I don't like about this is it's not drag and drop because with freaking Cantos everything is drag and drop and what I'll do is I'll go in here and go to my MLG one and I could just add my MLG regular or is it this one I think it's no I don't want that one yeah see then something I do like is the fact that you can um, transform it to fit to the screen so there it is and then I have my little box for if I want to throw my webcam in I could go ahead and throw my webcam in. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to show myself right now. But anyway, you go on to throw overlays and you could do all of that stuff. But me, I'm the type that I like to do everything in Cam Twist so that this way, if something was to happen in OBS where it fails, I don't have to go and sit back and go reset everything. Because I've had times where OBS has crashed on me and it doesn't remember what I had set up before. So I normally like to set things up in CamTwist so that this way it saves everything. Because once I set it up, it's saved. Like I can s go close CamTwist and then reopen it and all this stuff will open again because it's already set. I mean, the only thing that won't change is the siphon because you have to go ahead and s put it back on to what you have it set to, which is ITV, and then you're all set. Either way, um, if you're using the Avro Media um live game reportable or the extreme capture device that they have which is USB 3 I have the software here it's basically the same thing for both um I don't have the device here like I said before um in my previous video I pretty much explained how to do this 
while you're running rec center you can basically just go into siphon inject and then you can find rec center that's on here go ahead click inject and then you're pretty much all set um, like I said don't have that here so can't really show it to you but trust me it works but either way um, again this is basically the USB 2.0 device guide for Mac streamers so that this way you guys can actually get the best usage out of it now one thing I will stress to you guys hopefully if you did not buy one of these devices hopefully you didn't if you have a newer Mac that has USB 3 your best option is to just go out buy a black magic design black magic design intensity shuttle either the USB 3 or the Thunderbolt whichever one you want to use if your computer ha was from within the last two years if you bought your Mac in the last two years and it has Thunderbolt or it has USB 3 or it has both knock yourself out spend the 185 that you would probably spend on Elgato Game Capture 60 and get yourself that device because if you're looking to stream even if you're looking to record the recordings come out so much better on a shuttle than it does on an Elgato that's just me saying what I want to say but I'm being truthful a lot of the videos actually record better that way um, so if you guys don't know a lot of USB 2 devices like I said before has this delay and the delay just increases the more you use the the, the what the more that you use the device sorry I'm just having a little trouble with my words things like that but um as you guys can see like I can sit here and I could do all of this stuff here and it takes its time like there's a at this point right now there's like a, at least a two second delay going on and I have this set to live there's like no delay so like I can see here say left 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 and you guys can pretty much count that delay so um that that's pretty much the reason why I never suggest using any of those USB 2.0 devices if you're looking to stream on a Mac and you just bought your Mac like the last two three months and you let's just say you have a MacBook Pro retina display you have any of these new Macs that are out buy black magic do not buy USB 2 but this guide is basically for people who already have a USB 2.0 device and things like that so don't take this as okay Andre from Bifu Techie said for me to go out there and get an Elgato I'm telling you not to trust me <laughs> trust me if you're looking to stream Elgato is not the way but if you already have an Elgato and you don't want to spend $185 to buy another catcher device when you already had this one for let's say three months and you've been waiting for OBS to come out and whatnot I'll tell you this right now Elgato has software that basically allows you to stream in fact their new HD 60 just goes to prove that they don't want you to use something else to stream they want you to use their own software with their hardware they're gonna not want th you're gonna want to get your own separate recording your your own separate capture device that will actually allow you to stream okay cuz like I said black magic I use with can straight there's no delay so if I say like if I sit here and say hey I'm jumping right now you'll see me jumping at the same time as I'm saying it not I'm jumping and then five two to two to 22 seconds later you see me jump so um I guess that will pretty much do it for this guide um, hope you guys enjoyed if you guys have any questions please hit me up on the comment let me know on Twitter the Twitter is at Bifuteki which is at B-I-F-U-T-E-K-I -E or if you don't want to use Twitter or anything like that you guys can send me an email it's Bifu please at Bifuteki.com it's B-I-F-U P-L-Z at B-I-F-U-T-E-K-I dot com if you have any questions with streaming on a Mac even if it's on Windows too feel free to hit me up if you have any friends that wants to get their stream set up and stuff like that and you're watching this video and they're having problems on their Windows platform I'm pretty sure that I can help them alright guys so anyway I'll see you guys next video later